In this video, we're going to learn how to find the characters that are common to two strings using C. So first we'll declare a car array called str1 and we'll store into this car array the string portfolio. Then we'll declare a car array called str2 and we'll store into this car array the string courses. So these two strings have the characters lowercase o and lowercase r in common. So what we want to do is find these characters. We'll create a function to solve this problem. We'll call the function find common, and the function is going to return a pointer to a string containing these characters. So we'll have car pointer for the return type. Now the function is going to be passed pointers to both strings and their lengths. So we'll have the parameters car star str1 for the first string, and int len1 for its length, and car star str2 for the second string, and int len2 for its length. Then, to help us solve this problem, we're going to include the string.h library because this library includes a function called strlen, which is going to find the length of a string. And we'll also include the stdlib.h library because this library includes functions for dynamic memory allocation like malloc and free. Then down here, to call find common, we'll pass it str1 and the length of the string, which is 9, because this string has 9 characters, not including the null terminator character at the end of the string and we'll pass it str2 and the length of this string, which is seven. Now, if we didn't know the lengths of these strings, we could call the strlen string length function to determine them. So for example, here, we could call strlen and pass it str1, and this function call would return nine, the length of the string, not including the null terminator character. Then here, we could call strlen and pass it str2, and this time the function call would return seven. Now the function is going to return a pointer to a string which contains the characters which are common to both strings. So we'll store that pointer into a car pointer variable called common string. So we'll have car pointer common string is equal to the return pointer from this function. Then down here, we can output that string using printf. So we'll call printf and we'll pass it a string with common characters colon and then percent s to output a string followed by backslash in for new line and we'll put common string here. Now just a reminder that when we call this function and pass it the car arrays str1 and str2, what's really going to be passed is a pointer, where a pointer is a memory address. And what's going to be passed in this case here is the memory address of the first character in these strings. That's why here we have these car pointer parameters str1 and str2 for these strings. What they're going to store is the memory address of the first character in these strings. Now inside the function, we're going to be able to access str1 and str2 using array notation. So practically, this won't really matter for us very much. But I did want to remind you that this is how it works. And in a similar way, the function is going to return a pointer to the first character in the string, which contains the characters which are common to both strings. Now the function is going to use dynamic memory allocation to allocate space for that string partially because we don't know how many characters that string is going to be. So once we're done using that string, we'll free the space. Down here, we'll call free, and we'll pass it common string to free the space on the heap. Then we'll supply a definition of this function down here. So we'll copy this, and down here, we'll provide a function body. And the first thing we'll do is make sure the pointer parameters str1 and str2 are not set to null. So null is a special value, which essentially means a pointer to nothing. And if str1 or str2 are not pointing to a string, we can't really do anything in this case. So if str1 or str2 are set to null, then we're going to return null to essentially return no string. Now to determine the characters that are common to both strings, we're going to assume the strings are made up of characters encoded using ASCII. So in ASCII, characters are represented using integers from 0 to 255. So for example, the character uppercase A is represented with 65, and the character 8 is represented with 56, and so on. So again, we're going to assume the characters in our strings are encoded using ASCII. We could then use an array of ints to help keep track of which characters have occurred in both strings. So here, we'll declare an array of int values called exists in strings of length 256. So we have one index for each potential ASCII encoded character, and we'll assign the value zero to all the elements in this array. Now what we can do is use each index of this array to keep track of the existence of a character in these strings. 
So for example, the character uppercase A is really represented using the integer 65. So what we could do is set the index of this array uppercase A, which is really 65, equal to one if we find the character uppercase A in the string str1, and if we find the character uppercase A in the string str2, then we'll set this index equal to two. And in this way, we can keep track of which characters exist in both strings. So the first thing we'll do is create a for loop to go through each character in the first string str1. So we'll have here a for loop with a counter variable i, which will initialize to zero. We're going to increment i by one with each loop iteration with i++, and we'll stop this loop once i is no longer less than len one, the length of that first string. So with each iteration of the loop, i is going to go through each index in the string, and we can access each character in the string using str1 at the index i. Now remember, this character is going to be something like uppercase a, where that's really the integer 65. So what we'll do is set this index in the exists in strings array to one. So we'll have here exists in strings at the index str1 at the index i is equal to one. And that's to recognize that this character occurs in the first string str1. Then we'll make another loop to go through the characters in the second string str2. So we'll have another for loop here with a counter variable i, which will initialize to zero We'll again increment i by one with each loop iteration. This time we'll have the condition i is less than len two, the length of the second string. And then in this loop body, we can access each character in that second string using str2 at the index i. Now this time what we'll do is check this index in this array to see if it's equal to one. Because if it is, then we found a character in string two, which we know also occurs in string one. So we'll have here if exists in strings at the index str2 at the index i is equal to one, then we found a character in string two, which we also know exists in string one. And in this case, to recognize this, we'll set this index of the existence strings array equal to two. So we'll have here exists in strings at the index str2 at the index i is equal to two. And that's to acknowledge that this character is in both strings. Now the first time this loop encounters a character that's in string two, that's also in string one, we're going to have that this index is equal to one because we'll set the index for that character equal to one in this loop here. Then when we encounter the character here, that index is going to be one and this condition is going to be true. Then we'll set that index equal to two. That means on subsequent iterations of this loop, if we encounter that same character again, this condition is going to be false. And that's okay, because we've already acknowledged that character exists in both strings. So we're also going to use this loop to count how many characters are common to both strings, so we know how much memory to dynamically allocate. Now each time this if statement body runs, we'll know that we've found another character that's common to both strings. So up here, we'll declare an int type variable called count, which will initialize to zero. Then each time this if statement body runs, we'll increment count by one with count plus plus. Then we'll use this count to dynamically allocate space for the string. So down here, we'll call malloc. And the malloc function is going to allocate a block of memory that's as many bytes as the argument we pass to it. So if we pass 10 to malloc, it's going to allocate space for 10 bytes. Now it takes one byte to store one car value, so we'll pass malloc count plus one because we need count cars to store all the characters that our strings have in common, plus one more for the null terminator at the end of the string. Then we'll store the pointer, the memory address returned by malloc into a car pointer variable called common string. Then down here, we're going to fill this dynamically allocated string with the characters that our strings have in common. And we can identify those characters by going through this exists in strings array. So down here, we'll have a for loop. So we'll have a for loop with a counter variable i, which will initialize to zero. We're again going to increment i by one with each loop iteration. And this time we're going through each index of this array here, which has the length 256. So we'll have the condition i is less than 256. And we'll go through each index in this array. 
And if that index is set to two, that tells us the character associated with that index exists in both strings. So we'll have here, if exists in strings at the index i is equal to two, the character for this index exists in both strings. And in that case, we want to add that character to the common string. So we'll use the count variable to keep track of our index in the common string. So initially we'll have count is equal to zero. And if we find a character that exists in both strings, we'll set common string at the index count equal to that character. And again, let's remember that even though i is an int type variable, and we're using i to go through the indexes in this array, each one of those indexes in that array represents a character. So if we assign, for example, 65 to the string, it's like we're assigning uppercase a to the string. And we'll increment count each time we do this. So we continue to set the next character in common string to the next character that's common to both strings. Then when we're done, we'll also set the index count in common string to the null terminator to terminate the string. So down here, we'll have common string at the index count is equal to the null terminator to end the string, where what we have is count characters in our string. And then at the index count, we have the null terminator to end the string. Then the last thing to do is return common string. So here we're going to return common string, the pointer to our string. Now our strings have the characters lowercase o and lowercase r in common. So when we save compile and run the program, we'll get here that we have the common characters lowercase o and lowercase r. So this is how we can find the characters that are common to two strings using C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.